talking to Tina. Hello, Tina. It's good to see you. Um, we have a lot to talk about. You're a small business owner. What exactly is your business? Uh, we own a small, fast, casual um, chicken restaurant in Midland. Okay. okay. Really good. Love my chicken. Um, and we're going to be talking about some new, a new law going into effect that will affect all business owners and it'll affect all Michiganders as well. But I first want to act. So stay with us, everyone. We'll get to that. Why did you want to go into business? Why did you want to be a small business owner an entrepreneur? How, how that come about? Well, actually, my husband was in restaurant business um, early on in his life. And so he followed um, that avenue. And um, my family was in business, res business, restaurant business for many years. And so um, I taught school for a few years and then um, decided to help him uh, in the restaurant business. So um, we kind of work together. I do a lot of the human resource things and cover shifts and so forth. And he does the operating. Okay. Um, did you own the restaurant during the pandemic back then? Were you involved in, th you did? Yes. Okay. So what was it like? I mean, then it was, you're able, you're still around now and that's good because a lot of businesses in Michigan closed, especially restaurants. How's it been since then? Well, it's it's been good. It's just the hardest thing again are the the cost of goods going up continuously. Um, also, being able to get the employees back in working and um, and just kind of keeping on, you know, keeping above water and and keep going. And I mean, people still like to eat out, but um, they don't want to pay outrageous prices and it's it's very hard to keep so it. you're a you're a franchisee so you have a a restaurant that is kind of a bigger name but you are not the ceo i think people are confused and i want to explain that say so there may be a mcdonald's or a whatever but the corporations may not own that there's franchisees and that's what you are Right. We are in there working and we have to pay franchise fees to the franchise corporate. Okay. So we hear a lot over the last couple of days, especially about minimum wage and all that sort of thing and inflation. And I hear from some people, corporate greed. And I had an economics professor on from U of M Flint. And he said, no, that there's so many reasons why prices are going up. And in the restaurant industry, the margins are so thin, right? I mean, you're not rolling in Rolls Royces up to work or you're not on your big yacht going somewhere. Talk to people about how tight it really is. Well, and it is it is tight in the way that um, we we work it. Um, we don't just, co you know, collect and sit back. Um, we work it. Um, and there's probably bottom line, since we're a franchise, it's only 10%, 15% um, max profit. So um, we work, we try to work in those margin margins. And um, the problem is, is that our, um, it's getting to where the big corporations are taking over the small business people and the, indiv in the individual operators. Um, these franchises that um, have franchisees like us, um, we, we don't own hundreds of stores. So we are only making our living and everyone that works for us in a certain amount of margins. And, and that is different from corporate. And yeah. so you're not someone that has 50 McDonald or 50 restaurant there are those people like in bigger cities detroit metro area someone may have a hundred mcdonald's restaurants and that's correct yeah correct okay yeah um now getting to the point in in the michigan supreme court just uh made a ruling is very close on a case and i've talked about it before when it comes to minimum wage but there's something uh that not many people are talking about when it comes to paid leave and it sounds good when you say paid leave on paper. I think we all like paid leave, um, but you got some communication from the Michigan Restaurant 
Association. Well, I forget the official name of the Michigan Wrestling yes, Association. Yes, yes, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what have you been told as to, as in, I believe it's February of next year, if nothing changes, new uh, requirements will go into place. What are they? So this is called the ESTA, Earn Stayed, I mean, Earn Sick, uh, Earn Sick Time Away. Okay. And this provides up to 72 hours of paid sick leave for any employee. Um, this is uh, something that has to be given to every employee. It doesn't matter um, how many, well, it doesn't matter if they're part-time, doesn't matter if they're full-time, doesn't matter if they're seasonal, doesn't matter if they're um, temporary, um, doesn't matter if they're 15, 16, doesn't matter if they're 25. So um, if someone works five hours a week, it's still, they would have to. Yes, they have to. And we have to give up to 72 hours. That's two and a half weeks off. And um, the biggest thing, Dave, about this, not, not only is that going to add cost to us to have to raise prices again to cover this, but it is the, the underlining areas that what the sick leave away allows them. And one of the things is what we talked about is that um, and um, uh, these are young high schoolers, co some college age students. This is their first job they're working. And um, this law will provide them up to three days not to show up for work. Uh, we cannot, that's if they do not call in, they do not have to show up for three days. We do not have to, I mean, we can, we're not allowed to fire them. And they can let us know after the three days that they want to take paid leave during that time and we have to pay them. So let me let me get this straight because it's very interesting. Uh, let's let's say, yeah, you let's for example, you have an employee, you know, you can start working at age 16, right? Or 15 and a half or whatever. Yes. Um, so you have a 16 year old, 17 year old, or even a 50 year old, you have someone working for you and they have a shift scheduled at 2 p.m. Under this new Michigan law, they don't have to show up for three days and they don't have to tell you that they're not showing up. That's the new, that would be the new law? Correct. Do they have to say they were sick or they were, or? Um... No, they have up to three days to contact us. Okay. Now, as I understand as part of this law, if you as in a business owner, as a boss, like, you know, I were to say, as I would expect my boss to say to me, especially if I'm out three days, that's usually the rule. Um, okay. If you're out three days, you have a doctor's note. Um, can you still just easily do that as you understand it? Um, no. Um, we, if we ask for a doctor's note or we want a doctor's note and they do not have one, then we have to pay for their office visit to get a doctor's note. So if someone says, okay, so if someone, if one of your employees does not show up to work, they do a no call, no show, they're gone for three days, they come back and they say, hey, I was sick. And if you were to say, okay, we'll provide a doctor's note, you would have to them then pay for their doctor appointment. Correct. Wow. Um, I know, I know. And then uh, along with this, also about the three days is if you if you incentivize for young people to just not show up for three days. And my our thing with restaurant business is that we have people in line waiting to get waited on and eat. True. And I had said, like, what are we supposed to say to our customers? Like, hey, we don't have our employees showing up today. Can you come back next week? Because this is not like an office job or an, a, you know, like a advertising job where they can work on their paperwork or their project next week. Um, we have to really, I really press on my young people 
that, hey, it's really important that um, that you're here on time and that you're here when you're scheduled because we have people waiting that want to be fed and other people on the shift do not want to cover you and work extra. So it, it gets a very bad um, uh, precedent. Yeah. I, I mean, I would, I'm 49 years old growing up. I, my mom and dad taught me respect and, but I, I, I under, I know other restaurant owners and they do say they do have even now a lot of, I think it's no call, no show, or they just don't show up. Um, yeah. You're in a way, this law is incentivizing that I would hope most workers would be respectful, but as you know, that's some aren't, um, it, that's just, it just seems yeah, like I have a seven and 11 year old and I want to bring them up to be respectful and and hold themselves accountable. This just doesn't seem to jive with that very much. That doesn't seem to, to instill that. Right. This is one area that they need to to change on this or 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 do a restriction that they they have to. I mean, first of all, like I said, this this should be for full time employees, um, but um, again, even full-time employees, I feel like there should be a restriction that it, you have to call. You have to let a family member call or you call. Someone has to call uh, to say the first day to say, I cannot, I cannot make it. Yeah. Um, and, and if I'm, if someone's watching from the state, a lawmaker, if I'm getting this information wrong, message me, but I've done my research. I've, I've read the same information you have. If I'm reading the law wrong, call me and, and I'll put it out there, but I'm hearing the same thing you are. Um, but the thing is it goes into effect in February. So there is still a chance lawmakers can uh, possibly change this. Um, and uh, some business owners might be hearing this for the very first time. So I'm assuming you would encourage not just lawmakers, but citizens to call in to try to get the attention of lawmakers. Correct, yes. I mean, that's what, um, my representative said that's very important and Michigan and Restaurant Association said it's very important. And I'm sure in other, like even hospitality um, areas that, um, and and even like I said, like the, dear, you know, even the little ice cream shop owners. And like you said, like this might even go over into if you have babysitters or something that uh, this, is, this is not something for part-time that they need to be implementing. Why raise prices this much and possibly move our small businesses to close or have big corporations take over um, our, you know, on that? That's the question. So if this does go into place as it's written, what will this do? um for businesses what would it do for you because if you have to give people paid time off that's money you're paying people who aren't there so what you've talked to other business owners what would this do to them and you and others well you know like anything i mean even with the 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 um the pay rate hike uh the it, we do not have very much margins um, we give where we can, but with the cost of goods going up so much still, um, for example, just from last year, I mean, people think that like COVID's over and these prices are supposed to be going down, but a um, uh, case of chicken breast was last year was $54 a case. This year, it went up all the way to $104 a case at times. Um, so we're not seeing that decrease. So like... We cannot wow. now to add that we have to pay uh, employees more for not being there. Um, that is going to increase prices again and for customers. And, you know, we just we That's, it's hard so let because me, let me interrupt you. I'm sorry, but say that again. That is that's wild. So a case of chicken, like how many? It, is that like a big bulk? You buy in bulk a case of chicken. Was it just breast? From or? Cisco. Okay, so you buy a case or whatever it is of chicken breast. Is that it? Yes. Okay, so a year ago it was fifty four dollars, and now a year later you're paying more than a hundred. It yeah it the highest it went up to a hundred and four, and now it's down to eighty. But still eighty dollars from fifty four. 
And you're probably, you can't raise your prices all the way to make up for that because you'd have a $25 sandwich probably. Right, right. We have to like balance it out where in just in case of those, I mean, we, we, we take into consideration the flux fluctuations of, of food costs, but yeah. um, we were not expecting for, we thought last year prices were high. We did not expect that extreme and it, it, they keep just, they, it keeps going up. Yeah. And then if you deal with this, would you think businesses might, they might go out of business? Well, that's what the next thing is, is that the sad thing is, is that people will stop coming in. They have to cut back on uh, things. And, and so even, even the fast food, uh, you know, they're getting a bad rap for how expensive it is now. And so we've seen um, a decrease in sales. This is the first year in 10 years that we've had a decrease in sales. And, um, and we feel like people are cutting back. And so when you have to raise prices again um, to cover this, and it and, and really, this is something that should not be done. This should not. This yeah, should exactly. Not but also one thing I just thought of, and do you have a couple more minutes? Yes. Okay. Um, if I want to open a business in Michigan or an entrepreneur, this is not going to make me want to do that. I might start looking at Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio. Uh, I mean, and I'm not, I know I'm giving an opinion right there and I'm a journalist. I try not to give my opinion, but that just seems like a fact. You, it's not a conducive for helping small business. It doesn't seem like. Right. Right. And, no, and you're not just... someone who's against, you're not, like you said, if you have employees who are sick or whatever, you care about your workers. That's not what this is about. Yes. And, and a lot of part-time um, employees, young kids, high schoolers, college, like they, you know, they only work two or three days a week. Like they have four days off. Like we'll switch around, switch, we'll switch around people real quick to if they're, you know, sick and, and then they, and we see they have three or four days straight off that like they can recover at that time. I mean, this is just incentivizing people just to, you know, just not show up. And also to be late, like I said, now they're saying you can be, they can, you have to pay increments. So they can be 30 minutes late, an hour late, two hours late. They can come in and say, um, I was sick. I want to be paid for that time. And you can't write them up? No. Wow. Yeah, this is This could be going down a dangerous road. Um, yeah. So there is time for this to be changed. And I appreciate you speaking out. And yeah, like you said, this goes to, and as the way I read it, even if you have one employee, if you're a hair salon and you have two employees, but even if they're like a booth rental, I think you still have to, like a babysitter. I, I was watching something from the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce and the person said, yeah, if you have a babysitter, technically, legally under this, if you do it on the up and up, you'd have to give your babysitter paid time off, which- yeah. It's, I, it's, it's wide open, wide open. And the other one last thing, Dave, I, I will bring up is that also this is um, carried over. This is carried over like you. It's not like, OK, if you, you know, it, you can they can carry this over. So there's oh. no it's just no way that we can sustain planning to carry over hours. You mean year over year? Yes. So if I have in this, how much was it? 72 hours? They up, to se up to 72 hours. It, it, it depends on how many hours they work through the year. Yeah. So 72 hours, let's say I'm working one year uh, for you and I don't use it. That 72 hours goes over to the next year and then it adds up. So, and even and for- no end. Wow. Okay. And then I'm assuming the timekeeping is going to be even more difficult because I said, I heard you have to keep track of even a half hour, 15 minute increments and legally probably you're going to have to be on the hook to keep track of all that, which I don't know adds how. More. Adds more time and money. Because I don't know if you do it or if you hire an accountant or how that works, but that that's a lot probably to that that is that is a lot because it's not um the other thing too is you know we have like i said we have shifts and we have different people switching and you know all that stuff and so 
it's just a different kind of thing. And I, I, I feel again that they're not looking at all of the areas of life. They're looking at maybe like an office job or, you know, a professional job where, you know, sometimes we can put things off for a week because we're sick and we can't, but we just cannot, we cannot incentivize this and we cannot do this to uh, our citizens of Michigan. Yes, the service is going to suffer, I would assume, as well, right? Right. That's yes. And and people are already complaining. They pay a lot and they're waiting longer. Yeah. Last thing. Um, and I just came up with this. Um, someone asked me once to run for office and I said no. But I think before laws like this are made or legislation, and I know it happens, but it would be good if I was in, you know, run, if I was in office, which I don't want to be. I would come to all the business owners like you and have meetings and it would seem to be good to talk to not just meet with a couple people, have a room of 100 business owners and talk about these things before they come law, because that could have eliminated things like this, right? I mean, instead of yes. instead of listening to the lobbyists or the organization, get to the real because you're a real person. And if you if they would have invited you to Lansing, you probably would have told them what this would have done. Right. Right. No, I, I don't, I don't think that they understand <laughs> and especially it being so broad. Yeah. And I mean, the restaurant association, um, they, and for them, it's not political. I mean, it's not because they, they have been on sides of all causes. This is just for business in Michigan. So I'm going to have you back on again. If you hear anything else, let me know. I will. Um, but I'm going to put this out there and you would just encourage what anyone just to speak up. Yes. And call and email their representatives and say like this, this sick leave act is, um, is not good for Michigan. And, and it's just all around has to be a lot of changes made. Wow. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dave.